Ezekiel chapter 36, I'll read in verse 23. Or I'll start in verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put, in, will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the promises of the Old Testament and the New. I pray, Father, you would help us to make understanding this morning. And, Father, that you would teach us, give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Father, I'm not carelessly going about this, but, Lord, I come to you, a needy person, this morning. Cleanse me from my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empty me of self. And, Lord, knowledge and wisdom and understanding to all of us, Lord, I pray, would be given. That we would make application from your word. And, Lord, that we would be able to press forward. And, Lord, that we would give you the glory and praise. Because, Father, we're doing it the way you've commanded and what you've directed. And, Father, following your instruction, and we'll give you the praise and glory for it. Teach us indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. As always, you may be seated. And uh, we appreciate that. Do want to look at this morning, there's a couple of things. The title of our message this morning, What Kind of Heart Do You Have? You get all the way on up into... Uh, in, in verse number 26, he says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. A new heart. Sometimes, man, I tell you, I've known folks, I mean, Pro, Brother Bill, I mean, he just went, was at a four-way bypass, I understand, is that right? And, you know, a three-way, and, and, and a multitude. Brother Jim's been through that, several others in here. Uh, you know, when, the, when they call it the old tinker gets messed up, you want it fixed, right? Well, there is something that God knows that if we keep the old stony heart that we were born with, then he says, I've got to give you a new one. If I don't give you a new one, and you see, I don't want you to think in the physical sense of actually uh, opening you up and reaching in there and doing a transplant. However, what we can imagine physically, they couldn't even imagine that back at that time. Now we can think about it. But now what we can imagine physically, God, analysis, in an analogy, he gives it to us, and he says, here's what I'm going to do spiritually. I'm going to take your spiritual stony heart, and I'm going to put a new fleshly heart that will be able to hear and understand and know my will, my guidance, my direction. I'm going to write on your heart my word, and I'm going to put in your heart my word. Think about all the verses of Scripture. Thy word have I hid in mine Heart. heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, just another one just hit me. What uh, Proverbs three five and six? You know uh, that, that teaches us that not to go in our own way. You know, but but I, I'm just telling you, there's so many passages of scripture that God uses this term heart. He's not talking about the muscle that goes kathump kathump, but literally the innermost part of our being. And in this particular instance right here, he says, I am going to give you a new heart and a new spirit, and they're one and the same. I'm going to give you something, and I'm telling you, it is going to be a good thing, church. And he says, we're going to be renewed by the spirit of the grace of God. A new principle of life is put. Uh, go on, he says, I will put my spirit in verse 27 within you, cause you to walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. We go on. He says, look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be renewed. We're going to be renewed in the spirit and grace of God. I'm going to have a new principle and life if it's going to be put there. I'm going to be filled with a new purpose. I've got to have new affections placed there. New desires are going to be formed there. I'm going to have new delights and joys that are going to be put down there. And I'm not going to take in the things of this old world that used to magnify me or used to intrigue me or used to give me great joy or, or satisfaction. Now all those things are going to, I'm going to realize all those things are going
are going to burn up and pass away anyway. What I need is that joy that only comes from the Lord, which is the joy of the Lord that's my strength. And as we begin to look at each one of these things that God puts in there, we begin to see, wow, wait a minute. That, just, that sounds like what happened when I got saved. That don't sound like what happened when you got saved. I'm asking you this morning, what kind of heart do you have? Amen. Because if the old stony heart's gone and he puts a fleshly heart, like he teaches us right here in verse 26, he says, I will give you a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I'm going to take that stony heart. A stony heart, literally, what do you think of? A hard-hearted. Some people, it's a hard-hearted person. Somebody that just, I mean, literally, all of those things that we can think about that are all derogative to what a sensitive, fleshly heart that God would put there. The New Testament calls uh, all of these things. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, he says he, that he will create us, uh, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. He calls me a new man. That new heart, I'm a new man. But we're very familiar with 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's that same picture this morning, church. When he puts that new heart in me, I'm a new creature. When he puts that new heart in me, I'm a new man created after his own true righteousness. And then there's my favorite one. Go to Titus chapter 3, all the way back. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James. Uh, if you'll go back to Titus. And look in chapter number 3. It says this, starting in verse number 3. Titus 3, 3. It says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lust, and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hate, but hateful, hating one another. <coughs> that was the hard heart. That was the stony heart. That was the old heart. But after the, the kindness and love of God and Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, excuse me, that being just justified or declared righteous by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. And then as God teaches us these things, what he is pointing out to us, if you would, he says that we have been justified in all these things in this, in this act of regeneration. Uh, there is a regeneration that takes place here. That this regeneration is literally that picture of that worm that crawls up the limb, wraps itself in a cocoon, and then in that cocoon splits open, a butterfly comes out. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I thought a worm went in there. It did. Hey, I, wait a minute, I thought a worm is the one that wrapped itself up. It did. Well, how in the world did a whole new creature come out? That's the whole picture of regeneration. We take a stony heart because we were those things. But God comes in, once we put our faith in the finished work of Christ, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the shedding of His blood for the remission of my sins, the placement of my sins in a tomb as far as the east is from the west and carrying them far away, the resurrection of a Savior on that third and glorious morning, and Him sitting at the right hand of the Father, that's called the gospel. That's the good news. And the good news is that He can take a whole wicked stony heart and put a new one in its place. He takes the desires I had and he makes them new. And here's the problem. The problem is there's a lot of people praying prayer and they've had a cry and they've got goosebumps and they listened to a song and it made them kind of feel fuzzy, but you ain't never had a new heart. Amen. You've got to have a heart transplant. Amen. And if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus, I promise you he will create in you a clean heart. Matter of fact, think about it in Psalm 51, 9 and 10. David, after he had sinned with Bathsheba, he realized he had defiled himself. He realized he had sinned against God. He realized, oh man, I messed up. And he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We ought to want a clean heart. We ought to want a fleshly heart. We ought, we ought to want a new heart. And that new heart causes us to have something that only God can put there. Now, when we think about following your heart, 17.9 of the book of Jeremiah says this, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. 
And because of its wickedness, it causes me to be a sinner. And because I'm a sinner, the wages of sin are dead. And because the wages of sin is dead, that's why Jesus come and pushed me aside and stepped in my place and took my punishment for me. And he took it for you too. Amen. And the sins Amen. of all mankind. And when he did that, that was what he did that I can place my faith in that he is going to reach in and do me a spiritual heart transplant. I'm glad that God can save old sinners. Amen. I'm glad he can take a stony heart and put a new one in its place. Whenever that we see this, there's a new man, a regeneration, a new creature. All of these things are given direction to in the New Testament. Therefore, if the Lord puts in this new heart, we got to ask the question. There I always do. I'm like, well, what did he take out? And then I go back to my text. Okay, here's what he took out. What did he take out? He says, I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my statutes. In verse 27, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave unto your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call, uh, I'll, I'll call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. Man, God's promising some unbelievable things. But he goes back to verse 26. He says, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. This stony heart is what he's going to take out. If the Lord puts a new heart, what did he take out? He took a sin-hardened heart away. He took a heart that absolutely the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, all of a sudden, God did something in you that made you aware of your sin. Gave you understanding there's a punishment for sin. And God opens the windows of heaven and allows us to hear the glorious gospel, which is Jesus died for that sin, was buried, rose again. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I can have a heart transplant, Amen. a spiritual heart transplant. Amen. He can take the stony heart and do away with it and put in me a new heart that's going to make me a new man. He's going to regenerate me. And he's going to make me a new creature according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. A sin-hardened heart is going to be taken away. A senseless heart, meaning this, one that has no sense of compassion, one that has no sense of anything. He can take a stubborn heart. You ever seen anybody that says, I've heard of people being hard-hearted. I've heard of people being stubborn-hearted. I've heard of people being mean-hearted. I've heard of people being wicked-hearted. There's a whole bunch of terms that we lay in there, and God's already addressed this all the way back in the book of Ezekiel. Let me look at the... the uh, this is 587 B.C. There was 400 years before between Malachi and, and, and Matthew. So in this particular instance, we're looking at about 1,000, 2,000... My goodness, it's a long time ago. <laughs> God done dealt with this. And he says, listen, I'm telling you, I know your heart condition. I know your heart condition. I know you need a new heart. All we like sheep have gone astray. Do you know why God destroyed in six chapters of the Bible? People says, oh, I just believe things are going to keep getting better and better. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I don't know what in the world you're reading, but it ain't this book. Because by the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, it already repented God in his heart and he had made man. Yeah. And if it hadn't have been for Noah finding grace in the eyes of the Lord, we all wouldn't be here right now. Uh, and whenever that happened, it's because the hardness of their heart was wicked continually. Man, that's the condition. That you see, we can't look back at him and say, that's right, that's right, brother Ed. Boy, they was wicked. Mm -mm. We're just as wicked. Amen. Yeah. If you're saved, you were saved from that wickedness and you've had a heart of flesh put in just like I did. Amen. We got a spiritual heart transplant. And because of that, he took that stony heart away. Listen, he says he took a sin-hardened heart away, a senseless heart away, a stubborn heart away, a hard and impenitent heart. Romans chapter 2 verse 5 says, uh, says this, But after the, the, the hardness and impenitent heart treasures up into thyself, wrath against the day of wrath, and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. But after the, thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasure us up into thyself wrath against the day of wrath. In other words, your hard, impenitent heart. You know what people says whenever that you tell them Jesus is coming? Ah, they've said that for a thousand years. 
You tell them, I'm telling you, you better get saved. I don't need that. What have they got? They got a hard and penitent heart. The word penitent just seems so simply means this. It means unrepentant. What does repent mean? All right. Just in case you're still wondering, it means to change your mind. I used to say I was right, God was wrong. Repentance says I'm wrong, God's right. Amen. And because I accept that, it changes the way that I'm going. It's like driving down the road and your wife saying, Honey, I'm telling you, the GPS says here, I don't care, I've been here before. I know where I'm headed. And you get about 10 miles down the road, Honey, I'm telling you, the Siri keeps saying, Turn around, do it, turn around. I know where I'm going. That is a hard, penitent heart. Unrepentant, unlistened, will not listen to reason or direction. And finally, all of a sudden, you've got to admit to yourself, well, honey, I hate to say it, but we're lost. <laughs> no, we're not. I told you 25 miles ago instead to turn on that exit 27. All right? But here's the thing. What do you got to do? You've got to come to the knowledge, I messed up and I'm lost. Then what do you do? At the next available place, make a U-turn. All right? You make a U-turn. And when you make a U-turn, now where are you headed? In a different direction. You can't keep going in the direction you're going if you identify that you're lost without the, without the Lord Jesus and you've never placed your faith in His finished work. You're going to keep going on in your way and your destination is going to be a place called hell. Amen. And people say, like, well, bless God, I wish you wouldn't talk about that. <laughs> well, listen, Jesus called on hell more than He did heaven. Amen. Why did He do that? Because I don't want you to go there and He didn't either. Amen. And I'm telling you this morning, repentance means if you've got a hard and penitent heart, that means you've got a hard heart that won't listen and you won't hear and you refuse to believe that what God says is so. But the millisecond that you accept Him and you believe that He is God, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He has rewarded them that diligently seek Him. So you've got to have a change of mind. Then you've got to have a change of direction. And then how many times does it say walk in the ways? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, godly, or, sitteth in the seat of the, or, or standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate day and night. Psalms 1. We've got all these passages of Scripture that teaches me that I don't need to have a hard penitent or unrepentant heart. I've got to have a soft heart. The only place, here's the thing we do, we beat ourselves up. Man, if I could just give them this other verse, wouldn't it happen? Why? Because salvation is of the Lord. Amen. He that hath begun a good work in you is going to perform it when? To the end. Who started it? God did. Who worked in me both to will and do his good pleasure? He did. Who nailed unto man a measure of faith? Romans 12, 3. He did. It is only by Him and through Him that all things consist. Amen. And because of that, we've got to come to a point to know that if I get a heart transplant, it's not going to be because I talked you into it. Because you're going to still have the same stony heart. You might get churchy, and I might put a tie on you, and you might come into the right wood building, but you're going to have a stony old heart. Amen. Because you can take and put lipstick on a pig but you can't change it. You can Chanel number no. five it up, scrub it up, clean it up, put bows all over it, and lipstick on it. But as quick as you turn it out, it's going to go right back to the wall and in the mire. Straight out of Scripture. Yep. Will a dog not return to its own vomit? Yeah. Straight out of Scripture. Will a hog not return to the wall and in the mire? Straight out of Scripture. But I'll guarantee you, if the Lord Jesus got a hold of that pig's heart and put a, a, took the stony one out and a new one in it, it wouldn't go back there. Amen. Why? Because I'm telling you, he has a way of making a way out of no way, and he will change you. Amen. He will change you, and that's that what he's teaching us. A stony heart, what did he take out? A stony heart. It belongs to the lost person. Hard and loving, unsaved. It is impossible. It, it, here's the question. Is it possible... To get half a heart. I, well, I remember preach, teaching this and preaching this message a long time ago. The title of the message, Are You a Teetotaler? 
You remember that message? Yeah. Are you a teetotaler? Yep. Here's the question. If God takes a stony heart and puts it in a new heart of flesh, and that makes me alive in Christ, it makes me a new man, a new creature, and it makes me that I am now alive and regenerated. I was dead in my trespasses and sins, but he took out the stony heart and put a new one in his place, and now I'm alive and live forevermore. Amen. It won't never go bad. It doesn't need a defibrillator. It doesn't need a, a pacemaker. It doesn't need any of them things. Why? Because my maker is God. He's the one that made me. He's the one that saved me through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, here's the question. The question simply is this. All right? Can you get half a heart? Well, it's insane. You can have a bypass. Praise God for bypasses. You can get stents. Praise God for stents. But if your heart's bad and you need a heart transplant, they will never find somebody that has the, the organ donor stamped on their license and they come in and the doctor says, well, Brother Jack, we're going to have to cut it in half because somebody else is needing this in and I'm just going to, have, I'm going to give it half to them. Well, we don't want half our, listen, here's where I'm going with that. You can't be half saved. Right. Amen. You can't be half hearted in your service. Amen. You can't halfway make it there. That's right. Either you're all in or it ain't nothing, Jack. Amen. Amen. And here's the thing. Either you're a saint or you ain't. Amen. Either you've got a new heart or you ain't. Amen. Either your heart's stony or it's fleshly. Either you're a new man and born again and regenerated or you're not. Amen. And here's the thing. Scripture teaches us very clearly. I will take that stony heart and I will put a new one. And it is very much alluding to the New Testament revelation of the Holy Spirit coming to live in me. And he's going to put that, that's part of that new heart. A lost person can't get half a heart. You've got to get a whole heart. That means you've got to put your whole, uh, he says, love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love me with your whole heart. How many times, uh, I didn't write them down, but you can go and do a, a word study. Look up how many times he says, with your whole heart. God doesn't want half-heartedness. Praise God for the heart transplants. Amen. I'm glad that he can. God says, I will give you a heart of flesh, a sensible and a sensitive heart, a soft and a tender heart. Love, listen, love and fear of God heart. A spiritual and sanctified heart. A submissive to the will of God heart. Do you realize there's no way we could be submissive to the will of God if he hadn't put in me a new heart? Amen. Because I start, I, I, would, I would literally keep trying to do things my way instead of saying, Lord, I'm, I'm wrong. You're right. What should I do? I've got to have. I can't have a hard and penitent heart because if I do, I don't have a new heart. But if I've got a new heart, spiritually speaking, then I'm alive. He who was dead in sin, now I'm alive in Christ. And I've got a new heart within me. I've got a Holy Spirit within me that teaches me these things. A submissive to the will of God heart. Man, I'm glad I've got that. There's sometimes I want to not be. There's sometimes I want to do the things I want to do. And then I get convicted and I'm like, I oh, know, Lord, I shouldn't have did that. Okay, what do you want me to do? And I've got to be submissive to Him. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. And He'll flee from you. I've got to have a submissive heart. Why? Because God said, do you want the devil to flee from you? And I'm like, yeah, Lord, I want him to flee. What do I do? And he said, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen. That's how. That's how you get to that point. Well, the only way I can get the devil to flee is to be submissive to God because he can't stand hanging around where Jesus is. Amen. Amen. And he lives in me. All right. Where the laws of God are written, man, I'm telling you, the laws of God are written in our heart. Where the gospel of Christ is put, where faith, hope, and love is put, where the Holy Spirit lives and abides, where light is, no darkness can dwell. I challenge you to figure that out. I'll promise you, any light, anywhere you wire it, I don't care if it's battery powered or wireless, I don't care if it's electric, uh, I don't care what it is. You put a light somewhere and flip the switch, the darkness goes away. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what Jesus does when he comes in. The Holy Spirit lives, darkness leaves. Because Scripture teaches this darkness is of Satan, and when Jesus comes in, Satan is gone. Now here's the thing. The Lord is our ultimate 
Man, you could, you could, it would be infinite. But in this application, the Lord is the ultimate MRI. Well, Mr. Brown, I'm going to have to send you for MRI. We can't really see what's in there, but we'll get some pictures. And the Lord's the ultimate MRI. Amen. We're going to have to send you, uh, Mr. Mr. Jobin, we're going to have to send you for an x-ray because we don't really know what's the matter with your arm because we need to see in there and see what bone's broken. God is the x-ray. Yeah. He is the MRI. Listen, the Lord is the ultimate stress tester. Well, we're going to put you on this treadmill. We're going to run some dying and we'll do a stress test. He's the ultimate stress tester. I promise you, he can read it. <laughs> he can see it. When we're stressed out, he can feel it. We can't hide it. He knows what kind of heart we have. Bottom line, God knows what kind of heart we have. He knows if he's put a new heart in. You talk to any doctor and say, Doctor, how many surgeries have, have you uh, performed? Well, I've performed, I put a C. I did 716 transplants. I'll guarantee you, whoever that doctor is, when that person that got the transplant from him, when they see him out, if they was to see him out eating, hey doc, how you doing buddy? That doctor don't have to ask, now who are you? He knows who he opened up. He knows who he took the old one out and he knows who he put the new one in. That man that got that heart, guess what? He will ever remember that doctor because man, what a service he did for me. Oh my friend, there's a man named Dr. Jesus. Amen. And he can take a whole fleshly, he can take a whole fleshly stony heart out, and when he puts a new one in, oh son, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, it, it is an amazing thing to know that. Listen, there's a there's a one there's a birth I can't remember. Praise God, there's one I can't forget. Amen. And that's when I was born again into the family of God. The MRI, he can see it. The stress test, he can feel it. The X-ray, he can read it. We can't hide it. He knows what kind of heart we have. Matthew chapter number 13. Look at verse number 15, if you would. Here's what he says. For this people's heart is waxed gross. <laughs> a waxed gross heart means a fat heart. It really, it literally does. I looked it up. It says, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes, they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should, and should be converted and I should heal them. You know what? He says, those people's heart is wax gross. Do you know how many people have come in under the sound of the gospel? I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about Brother Aaron preaching. I'm not talking about some famous evangelist preaching. I, hey, all of us like Kenny Baldwin. Hey, how many times do you think Brother Kenny Baldwin's had people come in, sit under the sound of the gospel, and because of their wax gross heart, and their ears were dull of hearing, and they refused to hear because they knew if they did, here, here's what it would be like. Let's say you had a habit. Dipping, smoking, chewing. Let's imagine you had a habit. And I come to you and said, okay, that's a bad habit. Nobody argues that. But I know a way you can get rid of it. If you'll do this, it'll 100% take it away. And let's just per se, all right, I can give you 100% guarantee. Listen, the, 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 the success rate was 100%, five star. Guaranteed it's going to work. Do you know there's some people that likes their habit so much, That's it. they would not listen. Amen. Because they don't want it took away. Yeah. If you've still, you still got your habits because you want it, yeah. it's not because you, he can't take it away because I promise you he can. Yeah. He can. And I'm telling you, the folks that are lost, you know why you're lost? It's not because you ain't heard the gospel. You've probably got six Bibles in your house. Every radio station's got the gospel preached on it. You can turn on the TV, the gospel preached on it. Even though the sorry no count rascals that are trying to beg for your money every now and then, the gospel will get pitched out there, and that gospel will still save you. Amen. And the reason that you refuse to hear is because you don't want to be saved. You want to hang on to your sinful lifestyle. You want to remain in this lifestyle you're doing. You want to keep your stony heart. You want to be mean and ugly and nasty and hard-hearted. You don't want Jesus to put a loving, clean heart in you. That, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. The Lord is our ultimate MRI. He knows. 
And how does he know? Because he says there's some people whose hearts wax gross and they're just dull of hearing, lest that they should hear and I change them. He's like, if they would listen, I'd change them, but they won't listen. 